The challenge has lured man for decades. It is mixed with technology and daring. Take the wheel of a high-powered machine. Press its performance past its design. Recognize, then almost ignore the dangers. Fight, win races, then championships. Then meet the best from all forms of the craft. Matched in equal cars in the three-part series that is the International Race of Champions. A pinnacle meeting of the 12 of the best in racing. They've each taken a tough road like Bobby Rahal from the Indy cars in his fifth year in the IROC. In 1986, he won the Indianapolis 500 on the way to his first of two PPG IndyCar World Championships. He's a skilled and versatile driver. Mark Martin from NASCAR, a rookie to the IROC series. Three times, Martin has been the ASA champion. His ride with Jack Roush in Winston Cup Racing is producing victories, and Martin is always in the center of the action. Danny Sullivan, IndyCar driver. From a road racing background, Danny scored at Indy in 1985 and was the 1988 IndyCar World Champion. Last year, he won at Pocono and Road America, despite the fact that he was recovering from a broken arm suffered in practice for the Indianapolis 500. Dorsey Schrader, the Trans Am champion, is in his first IROC series. A versatile racer, he was a dominant force in the IMSA Firehawk series. Six Trans Am wins last year not only gave him the title, but Rookie of the Year honors as well. Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace. Rusty won the ASA crown in 1983. In 84, he was NASCAR's Rookie of the Year. Last year, he took the championship with six wins, earning over $2 million along the way. He also started last in the Daytona IROC a year ago and went on to take the win. IndyCar champion Emerson Fittipaldi of Brazil, the winner of the controversial 1989 Indianapolis 500. In 1972, he scored his first of two Formula One world titles. He retired in 1980, but four years later returned to race the IndyCars. Two-time IMSA champion Jeff Brabham, a former Super V and Can-Am champion. Jeff is the son of three-time Formula One world champion Jack Brabham. Racing is in his blood. Success is in this IROC sophomore statistics. His name is Little Al, but he's a giant in racing. From the racing Unser family, Al Jr. follows his legacy with championships in the Super V's and Can-Am. A winner of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Twice, he has been the IROC champion. Three times, Dale Earnhardt has won the Winston Cup title. In NASCAR, he has a domineering power. Dale's hard-charging style has pleased many a fan and angered many a competitor. He races in his sixth IROC series. Road racing champion Martin Brundle of England. A veteran of five years of racing in the Formula One is in his first IROC series. This sports car veteran has crowns in long distance events and the Sports Prototype World Championship in 1988. Voted the most popular Winston Cup driver of the year, Darrell Waltrip is also a three-time NASCAR champion. After 17 years of trying, he scored at the Daytona 500 last year. Waltrip races in his seventh IROC series. The defending champion in the IROC is Terry Labonte, representing the Winston Cup stock cars. The hard-charging Texan was the Winston Cup champion in 1984. This is his fourth invitation to the IROC series. He's a super speedway master. Twelve of the best racing has to offer in equally prepared cars. It's the Dodge International Race of Champions. Talladega, Super Speedway and its giant high banks nestled in the heartland of Alabama. Most appropriate race to start the 1990 International Race of Champions. Hello and welcome. I'm Paul Page. And we're ready to go racing in this wonderful series, IROC number 14. Now, you may remember last year, Terry Labonte wrapped up the championship in IROC 13 in what was a terrific series. The objective? take some of the greatest drivers in the world, put them in equally matched race cars, drivers from different disciplines, road racing, stock car racing, IndyCar racing, match them up, 
put them on three different race courses and at the end of the series total up the points and determine the overall champion. Now this year we have brand new race cars, Dodge Daytonas. Already in practice they prove them to be super little race cars and it in fact is most appropriate that we start here at Talladega with the Dodge. To expand that story, here is Jack Aroot. Paul, 20 years ago, this Dodge Daytona with Buddy Baker behind the wheel set a stock car record. The first stock car ever to go 200 miles per hour, and it was right here at Talladega Super Speedway. As we enter the final decade of the 20th century, this Dodge Daytona will usher in a brand new era for the international race of champions. The changeover in body styles and car mix was a long and arduous process over the winter months, as Jay Signori explains. Well, we started out with uh, our basic banjo chassis. And we went to our clay modeling studio in Detroit, and we modeled the Dodge Daytona to suit our, our, our chassis. And we went, with, went to Mopar and talked with the Mopar people, and they came up with all the necessary parts and pieces for the engine so we could build the, the proper engine for the, for the cars. The car is a specially built race car. It's not a street car. So there isn't a, a tremendous number of sheet metal pieces that you could purchase from a, a Dodge dealer because all that stuff's custom made. We went to Marietta, George's wind tunnel. We spent a fair amount of time in the tunnel stabilizing the car. We even built a fixture in the shop to assure us that the bodies were all on identically. That helped the aerodynamic part now tremendously. There's 25 guys back in IROC that worked very dedicated, long hours, seven day weeks to get this project done. On pit road, the Dodges are ready, the drivers are ready. Gentlemen, start your engines. So the engines are fired and we are ready to go racing the first round of the 1990 Dodge International Race of Champions. Now Bobby Unzer, a former IROC competitor, three-time winner of the Indianapolis 500. Talladega is one super little racetrack. Bob, Talladega is a 2.6 mile tri-oval, very similar to Daytona. It's the fastest track in the world. Now the Dodge Daytonas are also very fast, running speeds at over 187 miles an hour in practice. They have 355 cubic inch V8 engines, approximately 500 horsepower. The aerodynamics were developed in the Lockheed Wind Tunnel in Marietta, Georgia, not too far from here. The drivers tell us they're very stable at high speed, so this could well be the best IROC series ever. And of course, we have 12 of the finest drivers in the world. But Sam Posey, this year we've got some newcomers. And of course, Paul, rookies always provide an element of surprise. Take the Englishman Martin Brundle, for example. He may be a star in Formula One, but he has never driven a car like these IROC Dodges and never driven on a super speedway like Talladega either. Dorsey Schrader of St. Louis. After years in racing's minor leagues, Dorsey won the Trans Am Championship last year and has been catapulted into the limelight. How will he handle it? And Mark Martin, a NASCAR front runner who could score an upset victory in his first ever IROC race today. So. Three rookies, nine veterans, and a race in which surprises may very well be the order of the day. Well, the cars are rolling out. We'll be back for the start of the race. Finest in motorsports, and they're identically prepared. Dodge Daytonas, the front row. Down on the inside in the pink car is Bobby Rahal out of IndyCar Racing. The outside is Mark Martin, the stock car driver in the yellow car. In the second row, Danny Sullivan, that lime green, number three, down on the inside. The dark blue car is Dorsey Schrader, the Trans Am champion. Back in the third row, Rusty Wallace, the rose-colored car, down on the inside. And Emerson Fittipaldi, the reigning kart IndyCar world champion. In the fourth row, the black car is Jeff Brabham, the IMSA champion. And that bright blue car to the outside is Al Unser, Jr. The silver car, moving up from the fifth row, is Dale Earnhardt. To the outside, the mustard-colored machine is rookie Martin Brundle. And in the sixth and final row, the red car is Daryl Waltrip on the inside. And the orange car is the defending IROC champion Terry Labonte. Now, the starting positions for this race were chosen by the draw. Hereafter, starting positions will be determined by the finishing position of the previous race. They worked their way very carefully on the high banks here at Talladega. The race record here at 183.411 miles an hour was set by Cale Yarborough in 1986. Ahead, 38 
green flag rat lap 101 miles just a tick over 101 very carefully these 12 dodge daytonas now move down anticipating a green flag pace car comes off the track and bobby rahal in the pink car now has control of the field as they begin to form up earnhardt trailing well back along with Darrell Waldrop as they come to the start the pace begins to pick up now some strategy already being played at the back of the field they come across the line Mark Martin to the high side as he begins to pull ahead of Bobby Rahal well they're standing lined up just exactly the way they came across the start finish line Paul Rusty Wallace in the rose-colored car makes a move early as he dipped down across the track and swooped up to pick up his partner, Mark Martin. Now, the first few laps, Paul, they're going to be feeling each other out. They Remember, they've never run these new Dodge cars, these Daytonas, in traffic with this much traffic. So they're going to be seeing in passing really possible. Earnhardt down on the inside, and the silver car begins to move. He's using a low line, a low groove is working for him as he comes up and drops into fourth place. Earnhardt has never won in my race. On almost everything else in stock car racing, so this means a lot to it. Watch the other guys, Paul. They just immediately started breaking up. The minute they saw Dale Earnhardt do it, everybody went for just group every place to see if they'll cut the air by themselves. Looking back from Mark Martin's car, that's Wesley Wallace's machine just behind. And of course, the trick here, Bobby Unser, is for you to partner up if you possibly can. Yeah, now, already Wallace is partnered up with Martin. They're going to take advantage of the draft and try to pull away. Well, they're going to try to do that. Remember, one driver will partner up with any other driver. Anybody to play ball with them is what they do. Well, Rusty Wallace closes into the vacuum area of the car just ahead of him. The technique, of course, is called drafting. First discovered in NASCAR at Daytona back in the 60s. It's an unusual aerodynamic effect that actually allows two cars together to go faster than one running alone. IROC test driver Jim Souter gave a lesson on drafting to Danny Sullivan here at Talladega. Uh, you come on up to me now, uh, coming down the back shoot. Remember, you have to feather gently in and out of your throttle. And you never want to get out too quickly because they'll lose you in the draft, Roger. Step four. We're going to go down through the tri oval, duck underneath me. Step four. Step five. Okay, go ahead. You feel anything at all? Negative feels good. Little dodges, they handle real well, don't they? Yeah, this thing's really nice. Hey, I'm gonna try and pass you get into the corner down here, Roger. And four, go ahead. Right in behind me, as good as you can. Keep it tight, or you'll get lost in the draft, Roger. field as Rusty Wallace comes up to the front and Earnhardt tucks in behind Wallace as well as Mark Martin for a moment gets caught out of line but now comes in side by side with Earnhardt. Wallace won his first ever IROC race. It'd be interesting to see if Mark Martin in the yellow car right behind him now could duplicate that feat today. Although being a rookie here he has of course Martin does in that yellow car vast experience in this kind of super speedway racing. Potentially if you get out of line here you go back to the back so far it's looking like if you get out of line or at least there can be two lines you can keep on passing got a lot of position changes so far maybe the aerodynamic package is going to be a little bit better this year next car is run together in the front the car that surprises me is the dark blue car Dorsey Schroeder the Trans Am champion really he has absolutely no experience of any kind on this of this sort of racing and yet there he is right behind Dale Earnhardt 
doing beautifully. It's worth noting that Dorsey Schrader has one incredibly busy weekend ahead of him. He yeah, but he's caught out now. He gets caught out as Earnhardt tucks back into the line, and Dorsey now slides backwards. Absolutely. He flies from here to Topeka, Kansas this afternoon to compete in another race, and then on out to the West Coast to San Francisco to race again tomorrow. So this is the first of three races right in a row for Dorsey Schrader. On board with Mark Martin looking ahead to the leader of the race. at Dodge Daytona of Rusty Wallace. Wallace made his move early on. He got picked up to the front and now is using the advantage of running in the draft with Mark Martin. Mark Martin, by the way, says that these cars are so good, he wished that his Winston Cup car ran as good as this IROC Daytona. And Rusty Wallace loves this race. He just thinks that this is the nicest type of race that he can do. It's almost like a kid with a new bicycle to go play with in this thing. Boy, look at Martin's confidence. Remember, he is a rookie in this form of competition. But look, he puts it right in there behind Rusty Wallace. Now they begin to separate first and second. Here is Earnhardt running in third place right now. Al Unser is just behind him. And this camera is mounted. You can see it in the rearview mirror there. And they have a camera mounted on his helmet. Now we're looking over his shoulder. You got a glimpse there. Now you're looking through that helmet cam. And you get an idea of where little Al is looking as he works his way around. Now he'll team up with Dale Earnhardt ball. He and Dale understand each other really well. They're both hard charging drivers. They'll team up and good and try to get by these guys. Yes, and Earnhardt has great respect for Al Unser Jr. Although he comes from basically a road racing background, Al Unser Jr. does. He's shown incredible aptitude here for racing in this kind of event. Battle of two different drafts here as Earnhardt down on the low side is able to work that low groove and picks up the lead, takes Al with him. Now little Al actually pushed Dale. But I noticed their bumpers were actually touching. A little bit of tapping. What that does gets them about three miles an hour and it showed right up there. He went right on by the other lead. Well, if there was any question at all of how good these Dodge Daytonas would be, look at them showing off here. We've seen some great racing already. We're back. Let's go to Jack Aroot on Pit Road. Paul, well, we're so used to seeing crew chiefs with radios strapped to their sides talking to their drivers. This is Jay Signori. He's hooked up with a radio, but it only goes to the tower to talk about track conditions. The cars here are not equipped with radios, nor are the drivers appraised of their lap positions or their times by way of a pit board. They're out there all by themselves, and when they're in their normal discipline of race car driving, they're given a lot of information. Out there this afternoon, they've just got to drive by the seat of their pants. Well, that's what Dale Earnhardt does best. He's in that silver car. Out in front of this field in second place is Al Unser Jr. Mark Martin is third. Rusty Wallace rides in fourth place, but here comes little Al. Martin comes out to pull with him. And using the draft, they slide underneath Earnhardt. And now Al Unser Jr. moves to the lead. Mark Martin is in second. Earnhardt moves back into third. Wallace stays in fourth. Of the four cars that have broken away into the lead, three of them are driven by NASCAR veterans. Only one, the car being driven by Al Unser Jr. currently leading the race, is driven by a non-NASCAR driver. They're averaging 187.7 miles an hour. So at the moment, we have a new record here for the IROC and the International Race of Champions of over four miles an hour faster than the previous record. We talked at the top about rookies in this race, rookie drivers, but the cars themselves are the real rookies, all 12 of them. These Dodgers have never been raced before, and yet right now they're giving us the fastest ever average speed in an IROC race and performing very well. They have good downforce. These cars were developed, as I mentioned earlier, in the Lockheed aircraft wind tunnel, Sam, in Marietta, Georgia, and what they did is, is at 180 miles an hour, they were able to reduce the drag on the cars enough to equip 40 horsepower. Now, that's modern technology. It's the way the whole industry is going. Now, it's been kind of interesting to watch all the NASCAR drivers and crews kind of slide by the IROC spot, and especially take a look at how the back end of these cars are configured, because obviously they're working very well here at on the high banks of the super speedway. The first four cars, led by Allinger Jr., and you're watching from Mark Martin's car as Al works his way onto the back stretch, have really separated from the rest of the field. The battle is up here with these four, with Mark Martin now getting a push from Dale Earnhardt, and Mark Martin goes.
blows into the lead. Earnhardt comes into second place. Rusty Wallace closes in. Little Al goes back to fourth. Now that's a perfectly good example. Rusty saw that pass coming. He wasn't going to little, let Little Al slip into third place. He really quickly closed the door. He did lay back a little bit, probably to get his radiator cooled off a little bit, Paul. The race now is led by, led by I Rock rookie Mark Martin. Mark Martin is 31 years old. He's a fascinating man. He came up from the short tracks uh, in the early 1980s, had his first crack at NASCAR. He was instantly very successful, but then he failed, basically. He had to go back to the short track, and only recently has he come back uh, again, sort of reincarnated, and he's been very successful the second time Looking back. back the look at Earnhardt, closes in on Mark Martin, comes in, touches his bumper. That's what we want. Begins to push Mark Martin. He drops back just a bit. This is looking backwards from Martin's rear bumper cam. Just behind, of course, the silver car of Earnhardt is Rusty Wallace, and then Allen Jr. is back just a few feet from that. And you can really see the way, look at the way Dale's car moves around. There's Dale Earnhardt's car right up, almost touching the bumper. There. Not so sure he didn't, Bobby. I think that's a little tap right there. Could have been. Earnhardt, remember, was narrowly defeated in last year's Winston Cup Championship by Rusty Wallace, and then he had that heartbreaking loss in the Daytona 500 earlier this year. An IROC win would do a lot to help him regain his confidence. As we watch the bumper cam, you can just imagine how important shock absorbers are. Just watch that car going up and down as it goes through the turn. What we've seen is developed by the bumpiness of the race course, but perhaps even more so, we're seeing the effect of the winds that blow across this track. The aerodynamics of the car is adjusting to the wind as they get blown around because we've got a pretty stiff breeze coming across. It's Earnhardt moving down to the inside. Wallace tries the move as well. Little Al closes up behind Wallace. Mark Martin gets forced to the outside, up to the high lane. Earnhardt takes the lead, followed by Wallace. And now if Little Al can close in, he'll shut Mark Martin out. That's what he does, but Martin drops in behind Al Unser Jr. They're down running the low line to see if they can pick up some speed coming to the back stretch. They teamed up, Mark, Mark and Little Al teamed up just a little bit late on that particular lap. Otherwise, they could have gone right on in the first place. So Earnhardt is back in front, then Rusty Wallace, then Little Al, and Mark Martin drops back into fourth place. The battle is at the front of the field as Rusty Wallace now makes his move. Al Unser Jr. tries to decide which car he's going to go with. Rusty Wallace forges past Earnhardt, so now it is Wallace out in front of this field. This is a terrific IROC race with Rusty Wallace leading, followed by Earnhardt. We'll be right back here at Talladega. We're back at Talladega for the Dodge International Race of Champions. I'm Paul Bees with Tommy Unter, Sam Posey, and Jack Aroot. Rusty Wallace has the lead, but look here. Here comes Earnhardt with a little help from Al Unser Jr. once again. As Earnhardt goes back into the lead, Mark Martin closes up as well. This pack is being closed upon by the second group. You know, one thing these four drivers in the lead are thinking about is making sure that they're clear of the second bunch, which is only a couple of hundred yards behind them. They want to make sure that as they make these maneuvers, they're not cutting each other off and losing speed. That's right, Sam, because what would happen if they start making a pass like for every lap, they're just going to slow the entire group down. The second group will catch up. Then instead of having four cars to race with, there'll be eight cars. <laughs> That's the only way that you can tell these cars apart is by their color. Unless, of course, you're one of the crew members. They root for their own special car. Throughout the winter months, these crew members worked on the average 15 to 18 hours a day getting these cars ready. Now, most of them as well are short track racers in their own right, either mechanics or drivers. They have not come down off this wall. In fact, they're rooting for each of the individual cars that they worked so hard on this winter. The second group is, look at that, they're just about caught up. That means that they've already got the draft from the first group. The first group is going to have a race on their hands in just a minute. And the extraordinary thing, Bobby, is that that second group has two rookies in it. Brundle, the Grand Prix champion in that mustard-colored car, and Schroeder, Schrader, the uh, Trans Am champion in the dark blue car. So they, despite their inexperience, have been able to join the leader. Now you watch, they went down low, and they're just going to, they, they caught all the cars, so they're just going to get down low and try to truck on by. It's not likely that they can do it, though. You know who showed them the way was the old fox, Mr. Waltrip. I imagine there was some hand signaling from his car to those drivers, and they just stuck with it. Change in the front of the field. We've looked back from Darrell 
Paul Waltrip's car. As everybody dodging all over the course, and boy, it looked like Wallace got the back end loose coming off of the corner there. So Wallace drops back once again at the front of the field. Allender Jr. has forged ahead to the front, and Mark Martin has moved into second, followed by Earnhardt. It really looks as if Waltrip used those two rookie drivers new to this game to help him leapfrog up to the lead group. One thing he said yesterday when we were talking, of course, Darrell Waltrip is a great storyteller. It's hard to stop him. And very entertaining, too, by the way. But he said always the element of surprise serves you well here. Looking back now, Earnhardt, that red car to the right side comes. Waltrip in the red car to the right side comes along Earnhardt in that silver car. As they line up as if they're going to pace this race and start it all over. Oh my, is this a super battle at the front? Is that just second field moving itself up, catching the, the front four? And now we really got one going. It's just like the start of the race now. They're side by side, and it's going to be teaming up, but teaming up more in group. The individuals are getting a little bit afraid now to single off by themselves. Look at the bottom group. Part of them that came up from the back end, Paul. You mentioned him before. Are you surprised that Martin Brundle is doing as well as he is? I am astonished. His experience is all in Grand Prix racing and driving in the World Sports Car Championship Series for Jaguar. To see him this good here is phenomenal. For Brundle and Schrader, Sam, they're both doing the best I think we've seen rookies do on the college and high track and fastest tracks in the world. It's just amazing. And they're making good use of it. They are running well over the IROC record right now. The International Race of Champions continues from Talladega Super Speedway. Darrell Waltrip is out in front. We're back at the Dodge International Race of Champions. I'm Paul Page. The red car out in front belongs to Darrell Waltrip with Earnhardt just behind and Al Unser Jr. Look at Rusty Wallace as he moves up to the high groove alongside Mark Martin. Stay up there. They come to the backside. And Wallace has a nose ahead of Martin. You know, this is a most significant racetrack in the history of motorsports. Earlier, Jack Aroop took a look at the legacy of Caledonia. In the 1940s, this was East Toboga Military Airfield, where damaged World War II aircraft were repaired and then returned to the theaters of war. But with the advent of peacetime, there was no longer a need for the airfield. So it lay dormant until 1968, when Bill France Sr. had the vision to build the world's fastest super speedway. Talladega's layout was tailor-made for those searching for speed. The late Mark Donahue used the 2.66-mile trioval and her five-story tall banks to set a closed-course world speed record. From that point on, world records were part of Talladega's tradition. From tractor trailers to stock cars, Talladega became a blacktop Bonneville. Local folklore has it that this area is an ancient Indian burial ground and that a curse will fall on anyone who disturbs the eternal rest of the ancestors buried here. True or not, fans who flock to the Talladega Super Speedway have come to expect the unexpected. Competition on the track could erupt into chaos. Vehicles built to cover a football field a second would test a driver's reaction time. An attempted pass for position misjudged by a mere inch would sometimes result in sheet metal crunching contact. Every lap at Talladega is a test of man and machine. Some pass the test, others become a footnote in the track's history. There's more than local history here, though. In fact, in an effort to maintain and preserve the heritage of worldwide motorsports, the France family, in conjunction with the state of Alabama, founded and maintained the International Motorsports Hall of Fame right on the Speedway grounds. Fans can view not only the history of stock car racing, but historic vehicles from all forms of motorsports. But probably the biggest attention getter remains the remnants of those that have challenged the five-story tall banks of Talladega. Well, they're presenting a tremendous challenge to the Dodge International Race of Champions competitors. That is Darrell Waldrop out in front in the red car. Voted the most popular driver in NASCAR last year. And take a look at the draft down on the inside as Little Al tries to get past. Very satisfied with 
driving with each other. They get along really good. Rusty, very, very cagey NASCAR driver. He understands this stuff. He's Mark Martin. About a lot of Mark Martin wisely tags on to the back of Wallace. And again, we're running side by side coming off the high bank. But suddenly the configuration is the three rookies in that lead group are at the back right now. Boy, look at this. Look at Wallace as he comes out. And Mark Martin decides, no, I'm not going with that. As Wallace comes around Al Unser Jr. on board with Mark Martin's car. Look how close he comes with Dorsey. Well, that could have been bad. Mark Martin, Mark Martin was getting past in there, Paul. He's in on the apron, and there just wasn't enough room down there. Waltrip, Bernhardt, Wallace fights it out for third place. Now running low, and Martin Brundle and Mark Martin, both rookies, right there in the middle of the fight. as an example. He just got caught in the wrong place, went from third tear down to fifth tear. Now everybody wonders, one thing to test a brand new race car, an entirely different thing to race it. And I'll tell you, the Dodge Daytona has turned out to be an incredible new race car. Waltrip leads over Earnhardt in the International Race of Champions. We'll be right back. Right off the rear bumper of Darrell Waltrip's car, we're looking back at Dale Earnhardt. Waltrip is the leader, but we have had a marvelous six-car battle at the front of the field and in Virginia. As Earnhardt tries to push Waltrip to the high side, there you're looking at Earnhardt's bumper. Mark Martin sits down on the low side, as does Al Unser Jr. They have found that they can drive about anywhere on this track they want, and they're taking advantage of it. These are the Goodyear radial tires. You can see what the tires are going to Not just the shock absorbers, but just look at the brakes. Oh, as Here's Earnhardt the comes up, gives him a little bump, gives him a little help. That's a little three-mile-an-hour bump right there. You need it occasionally, especially down the straightaways. Now, if he were to do that, going into the turn, or in the turn, that would be a spin out. I think the fact that he can do that, Bobby, shows the confidence that they're now showing in these cars. Now they've raced them a little bit. They found out they really can race them and race them well. Dodges are good cars. They've turned out a lot better than uh, we wish Dodge would have been in here many years ago. Been back in racing, but also you can just see that the drivers are super drivers. Darrell Waldrop leads. Earlier we asked him about out racing the IROC here at Talladega and what it takes to win. The element of surprise, I think, is more important in our rock race than anything else. If you can think, particularly here at Talladega, if you can think of something to do that would disrupt what everybody else is planning on doing, and, and then you might have a shot at just blowing them all loose. Well, Mark Martin is going to try that strategy now as he ducks down to the inside to see if he can find a hole. But if he gets caught down there and forced down there, he will fall backwards very quickly. Waltrip is still out in front. It's a mind game. That's exactly what Darrell Waltrip said yesterday, and that's what it is. Waltrip, of course, leading, was named the most popular of the NASCAR drivers last year, and many people are rooting here for Dale Earnhardt, who was really robbed of the Daytona 500 earlier this year. Very knowledgeable crowd here in uh, Alabama. We're looking back to Martin Brundle from Alan Unser Jr.'s car. Brundle really holding his own in a spectacular run here, but a tremendous fight at the front of the field. Champions. 12 cars started, six of them have led, and six of them are all running right together, and they're all battling to the front. I don't think we've ever seen a rookie do this well at a super speedway as we have Brundle and Schrader today. The race has been fabulous so far. Led for the moment, at least, by Darrell Waldrop. Earnhardt chases as seven cars run right together. They have raced this way throughout the afternoon here in the International Race of Champions. These little Dodge cars are really performing well and setting records. They're very pleased with the new Dodge Daytona. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Paul, I'm with Larry Baker, who's the general manager for the Dodge Motor Division of Chrysler Corporation. Larry, an entrance back into stock car type racing, oval track racing specifically with the International Race of Champions. Performance minded once again at Dodge? Well, we like to think of Dodge as the performance division. We've got some great new cars coming out to pay that off, and it's been a long time, but we're back. What do you look for in the International Race of Champions? Some renewed enthusiasm? Well, we like to show off our performance heritage with Dodge, obviously, and tell the people we got new stuff coming, but also. Uh, you know, it's an exciting series. It's great entertainment for our people by our cars and trucks. Well, Paul, as you know, all 12 drivers that have been in this event so far have had nothing but great things to say about the new IROC Dodge Daytonas. Well, there's a view of Earnhardt's Dodge about five feet back from Darrell Waltrip's bumper. Closest margin of victory, eight inches. Darrell 
Oscar Plenty, 1984, here at Talladega. It may be even closer than that today. You're watching Darrell Waltrip. Look at his style as he, uh, you can see how far on these high banks the car actually rolls over as you look to the grass down to the inside there. Six laps to go now on the back stretch. Will Waltrip win it here? Well, Earnhardt's right behind and may have something to say about it. Little Al is there as well. They're all doing their planning right now. All their game planning about when am I going to try the pass? Who will team up with me to try to help me do this pass at the last minute? And one factor is that Danny Sullivan in the lime green car is about to be lapped by the leaders. You saw him there on the left of the screen. That could be a crucial matter as they start to come by. Our drivers did say, though, that they know that they really can't compete as solidly here, and they would be happy just with a mid-pack finish so that they can line up better when they go to the second race of the series at Cleveland. Oh, maybe. I don't think Sullivan wants to be lapped by these men, especially when you realize that Brundle and Sh uh, Schrader are in there. And they come down now to overhaul Danny Sullivan, who wisely moves to the inside and lets that incredible freight train, led by Daryl Waltrip, go down the backstretch. We'll be back with more. International Race of Champions. Back to the closing lap now of the Dodge International Race of Champions. I'm Paul Page with Bobby Andrew Sam. That's Daryl Waldrop, that bright red car, leading as they come to the line. Four laps to go in second place is Earnhardt. We look back at Earnhardt's car from the rear bumper of Waldrop. But I'll tell you what, there are now a whole bevy, six different cars that at any second can move up here and assume the lead. They've proven it time and time again. They've got to start be making a little bit of a play here pretty quick. Now, little Al, for example, right there, is playing it just slightly conservative. He's afraid to pull out because he could go clear to the back of the train. He's in third right now, just as Rusty got to do it. But the men with the biggest inventory of last lap maneuvers are the two men in the lead, Waltrip and Earnhardt. Younger, are he in one of those positions where Earnhardt is exactly where he wants to be? Well, here we go with another move as Little Al comes to the inside. Mark Martin moves in to pick up Little Al. Let's see if they both can come into the lead. Russell closes in on the back of Earnhardt. Rusty Schrader drops to the inside. Rusty Wallace backs up behind the entire group looking for a place that he can pick. Little Al went right by. Now, he did his big plan. He did his big pass. Now, he may not have another one left, but the time he gets out of the line or if a couple other guys team up like they're doing right now he may not get another before the end of the race Waltrip and Earnhardt shuffle pass again they're both looking for the right place to be uh, I guarantee you, you're gonna see me working hard to be at the right place once I find out where it is but it's probably it, it, you know in the, in the Camaras it was hard to figure out I think you know maybe leading was the best place but it's hard to say and these cars are dressed so well uh, you know maybe the old slingshot you know might be the old second or third place car you know. Waltrip still the leader. Earnhardt in second place. I was about to ask you, Bobby, maybe second is a better place to be? Well, it isn't bad, especially with a race like this that has been going. The Dodge State Tournament has absolutely been just as good as we thought they would be. On board, third place, Allen's or Jr. The other point here is that the finish line is just beyond the trial. So you have to drive with a little different strategy on the last lap running for that line. Is look at Earnhardt come up and just... Him. Boy, that's super. You know, you look at the front end, they're not even bent on the cars that we watched them bump probably at least eight or ten times already right on the television, yet they're still not bent. Looking for the white flag now, one lap to go, and it's still anybody's race. Six different cars in contention. As they come to the line, it will be Earnhardt out in front. Or Walter out in front of Earnhardt. Then Little Al, Brundle and Mark Martin battle back behind them. Now we're on the final That was just high super speedway in spring. Just got up and pushed it right over. Final pass down the back stretch as Earnhardt now comes inside Waldrop. Little Al gives him a little bit of help. They come past Waldrop. Here they come, the final maneuvers. There's only one turn and a little bit left now. It looks like Waldrop has faded from the picture. Earnhardt leads it, but will Little Al be able to drop out of the line and pick up? They come to the trial with the start finish line is a bit behind that. Earnhardt widens his car out. As they come into the line, Earnhardt, followed by Al Unser Jr., and then Mark Martin. And there it is. Earnhardt takes 
the first international race of champions for 1990, and the Dodgers proved to be terrific. Best super speedway race we've ever seen in the IROC series. And the first win ever in IROC for Dale Earnhardt. One spectacular race. Unbelievable. There is your winner, the silver car, Dale Earnhardt, lined up just behind Waltrip, took advantage of the draft at second place position. He and little Al forged to the front, and Earnhardt picked up the win. We'll be right back. First IROC of the new decade is won by Dale Earnhardt. Here's Jack. Well, Dale Earnhardt, you decided to win your first one ever here at Talladega, and just so you know, you did it in record time. You now hold the title for the fastest IROC race, 188.055 miles per hour. Uh, that's neat. It's uh, really neat, uh, Jay and them guys, uh, pair of cars like they do. These cars here were pretty equal. You had a draft. Everybody had to stay in a draft. And, uh, we're tickled left to win it. You know, Dodge came along, picked up the series, and I'm glad to see them do that. And they're doing a great job, and good year, and all the rest of the sponsor, True Value, and everybody else. It's a neat deal. So Dale Earnhardt wins the first of three as we look down to the final results. Danny Sullivan finishes 12th. But the road racer will start on the pole when they move next to the road circuit at the Burke Lakefront Airport. Be with us there.